You can imagine a stranger just having a collection of pictures of your child or someone that is close to you because you are sharing too much information. So what do you do? Welcome to Cyber Culture Interviews. This is a channel where we discuss everything cybersecurity. In cybersecurity, there are three fundamental things that you do. You protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data, assets, or resources. So every cybersecurity professional is doing these three things. And so whatever aspect of cybersecurity you are playing in, you are either protecting the confidentiality, the integrity, or the availability of data. For example, if you are setting up an antivirus, you are preventing your system from being intruded by virus. A virus might actually go ahead and encrypt your file and make it unreadable, making your file losing its integrity and also not being available to you. So you are either protecting the confidentiality, the integrity or the availability of data. And that is why we have several tools that cybersecurity professionals make use of every day. Today we are looking at five things that breaks confidentiality in cybersecurity. Five things you need to be worried about. And as a, either as a cybersecurity professional or as just a normal user of digital devices, you need to look at these five things. So the first thing we are going to be looking at is shoulder surfing. Shoulder surfing is basically when someone is spying or looking over your shoulder to steal a glance at what you are doing. You could be in a cafe, for instance, maybe you are browsing or you are using your system in a public place and someone stays behind and trying to guess your, to see your movement, the, finger, the movement of your fingers, to guess what your password is. Or you are entering to a, into a building and you are trying to point your access code and the person is trying to see the numbers you are putting or you are in a, uh, a, an ATM machine, you are trying to withdraw cash and you are punching your pin code into your ATM card. Somebody can stay behind and try to sneak and see what you are doing. That is basically soda surfing. So basically we are saying somebody is looking over your shoulder to check your password, to check your pin or to maybe to just see the information. It could be an office for instance, you are typing some confidential document and somebody is staying by you trying to see what document or trying to see the messages you are typing. That is shoulder surfing. And how do we prevent shoulder surfing? One of the things you can do uh, is to ensure that nobody's around you. Just look around, check your angles, make sure that the people behind or around you are distant from you and they cannot see what you are doing, especially when you are typing something confidential. Another way is using a uh, screen. There's some protective screen that are now available on your mobile phone. Uh, there are some screen that if you install it on your mobile phones now, it's only you that you are standing directly in front of your mobile phone that can see what you are typing. Someone staying beside you may not be able to see. That is a perfect way of uh, preventing shoulder surfing. Another way of preventing shoulder surfing is to use biometric authentication. So instead of you know getting in front of your door and trying to press your PIN code, you can simply just use your fingerprint or your iris scanner, you know, or your face, you know, face scanner. There's no way somebody can show that off and guess your face. So, so biometric, you know, capture or biometric uh, authentication is a very perfect way of preventing shoulder surfing. Another common way that confidentiality is broken in cybersecurity frequently is through phishing. Phishing has become, you know, a very, very common uh, incidents now. A lot of people are now more aware of phishing, but phishing basically means somebody sending you a fake email or a fake uh, message, you know, that is deceiving you to clicking some link, you know, and then once you click the link, it takes you to a fake website where your information, your data can be compromised or your confidentiality can be compromised. At that place, they can still steal your private data or you can have access to your resources or your asset. That is confidentiality being broken through phishing. Phishing can be prevented in a lot of ways. So the first thing, you know, check emails. Be wary of the kind of emails you respond to. When you get an email, check the sender, check the address. Ensure that the email is coming from the right sort from an authentic source, from a genuine source, from someone you know when you see the email message coming read it properly when you see some tones of urgency or some unfamiliar tone be wary of such messages another way of ensuring that you don't fall victim or for phishing is to use password manager to automatically fill you know information so 
part of my manager will automatically fill, you know, and then if somebody is you know, trying to steal your, your login details, password manager may help you to avoid such, such uh, incidents. Another way to prevent phishing is never click suspicious link. Never click suspicious link. So when you see a suspicious link in your anywhere and you're not familiar with, don't click it. Don't click on the link. Always find a way of verifying the authenticity of every link you get. Another way of uh, preventing phishing, ensuring that you don't fall victim of phishing, is to use multi-factor authentication. So this one will protect you, you know, f even when you make a mistake and then you maybe sort of surely uh, unknowingly you click some link and you've been compromised. Because you have multi-factor authentication, they can only get your password. They will not be able to get the second factor of authentication. So multi-factor authentication will help you prevent you from becoming a victim of a phishing attack. The third thing I'm going to be talking about that break confidentiality a lot in cybersecurity is a weak password. And a lot of people are you know, guilty of using weak password. Many people just look for the most convenient word they can remember. Sometimes you use your birthday, you use your child's birthday, you use your pet name, you know, you use a common name like Jesus, Christ, you know, use very, very easy to guess password. This is putting your confidentiality at risk. When you use a password that is, it can be easily guessed or a software can easily you know, randomly generate your password or your password has been compromised, a password that are available free on the internet, then such uh, situations can put your confidentiality at risk. So how do you ensure that you don't fall victim of or your confidentiality is not broken through a weak password? Use password generation. The first one is use a password generator. Password generators can help you generate very strong password. So when you are forming your password, use very strong password. And when I say very strong password, I mean use password that are alphanumeric, that are long in number, that combination of both uh, uh, word, letters, numbers, alphanumeric, different symbols, Combine a lot of these things that, to ensure that your password is very strong. Another way of also preventing your confidentiality being broken through a weak password is to use multi-factor authentication again. So when you use multi-factor authentication, that means you are not only typing a password into your system, you also have to make use of another token, maybe something you own or something you know or, or your location and information that is extra apart from the password so that even when someone gets your weak password, they will not have the token or the other authentication factor that you have set in place. Another thing that breaks confidentiality most time is unsecured public Wi-Fi. So a lot of us are fond of using uh, public Wi-Fi. Well, I don't blame of some of us who travel a lot, may get to a airport or you get to a place and you urgently need to use uh, internet connection and then all you have is a public Wi-Fi. So Unsecured public Wi-Fi can be a problem. So if you get to a Wi-Fi in a public space and you need to use Wi-Fi, first of all, check whether it's secured. Be sure it's a password, a Wi-Fi that is properly secured, that is provided by uh, an organization that has a reputation, you know, something that is properly guided, that is properly measured, that the password is not just given to everybody or anyhow. You can't just guess the password and use. Make sure the Wi-Fi is password or make sure the public Wi-Fi you're about to use is secured. Why? Because most unsecured, unsecured public Wi-Fi, they don't have um, encryption. So another person that connects to the internet or to connect to the public Wi-Fi can have access to what you are doing because you are both sharing the same Wi-Fi. And then because your communication on the public Wi-Fi or because the, the login are not, the, your logins are not encrypted, then you can easily compromise your confidentiality. Your details, like your bank account details, your username, your bio data can easily be stolen on public Wi-Fi when they are not encrypted. Another thing to take note with public Wi-Fi is sometimes attackers, hackers, they set up fake public Wi-Fi. So you go to a public place and you see a free internet, you know, a free Wi-Fi connection, and you think, oh, this, this doesn't have password, it's open for everybody to connect. Sometimes hackers intentionally set up fake Wi-Fi, you know, and then you connect, and once you connect, you are just automatically giving them access to your data and to your confidentiality. So your privacy can be broken immediately because all the things that are available on your wife or your devices can be accessible to these hackers and attackers who have set up this fake Wi-Fi. So how do you prevent your confidentiality being broken through public Wi-Fi? When you can avoid the use of public Wi-Fi, 
at all. And in a case whereby you have to use public Wi-Fi, make sure you use a VPN. When you have to use public Wi-Fi, make sure you use a VPN. A VPN will protect you. A VPN will create a tunnel so that even when you are connected to a public Wi-Fi, what conversations you are having through the VPN will not be accessible because the VPN conversations are going to be encrypted and then hackers or other people on the same network will not be able to access what you are doing. The VPN creates a safe tunnel for you to connect to the server or connect to wherever you want to connect to. So use a an authentic and genuine VPN whenever you are using a public Wi-Fi or when you have to use a public Wi-Fi. Another very common thing that people do with public Wi-Fi is their system automatically connects to public Wi-Fi. So the first thing you need to do to ensure that your confidentiality is not broken is to remove automatic connection to public Wi-Fi. Some people's devices, everywhere they go, whenever it sees the Wi-Fi, it does connect to it automatically as long as Wi-Fi is open. Sometimes you are carrying your phone or device around, you don't even know that your device is already connected to the Wi-Fi. So please disable auto connect to public Wi-Fi or disable auto connect to Wi-Fi. Make sure every time you want to connect to a Wi-Fi, you intentionally have to connect to the Wi-Fi because hackers, will already be carrying out their operation on your device and you will not know because your devices are automatically connected to Wi-Fi. And lastly, a very pathetic way that people lose their confidentiality to hackers or malicious you know, users of the internet is oversharing information on the internet. So a lot of people just take pictures, their details, they share everything about their life on the internet. Recently, I saw a, a snapshot, you know, I saw a, a incident on Twitter where a lady kept, a lady that normally shares a picture of her child on the internet. Someone has been, you know, taking all these images of the child and storing it on his device. I, you can imagine a stranger just having a collection of pictures of you or of your child or someone that is close to you because you are sharing too much information. So, over sharing of information on the internet or on social media is a very, very you know, common way where people lose their confidentiality or lose their privacy on the internet. So, what do you do? Limit what you share. Limit whatever information you share. So, people don't need to know everything about you. Limit the kind of information that you share on the internet. The second thing is check your privacy settings. Some people take pictures and check videos on their phones and they don't know that automatically once they take this picture is going on the social media that they have. Some of these pictures find itself on, on uh, WhatsApp, from them finding on Google Photos, you know, on the cloud automatically because that's your device setting. So you need to check your privacy setting on your device to ensure that the pictures and the videos and the things you take with your phone don't automatically upload itself to the internet. See, be careful with friend requests. Be careful with the kind of friend requests. You know, some people just see requests for friendship from people they don't know, they don't know anything about them, there's no relationship, there's nothing connecting you to such people and you accept their friendship. And once you accept their friendship, they have access to your everything you are posting on the internet or posting or sharing on your Facebook or sharing on your social media pages. So please limit accepting of friend requests and all this will help your confidentiality. So we have talked about five things that usually cause confidentiality to be easily broken. We're talking about shoulder surfing, we're talking about weak password, we're talking about unsecured uh, public Wi-Fi, we talked about you no know, oversharing content on the internet, you know, and these are ways you need to be very careful about. So your confidentiality is very important. Your confidentiality is a sense or, or is same as saying your privacy. In order to protect your privacy, ensure that these five things that I've mentioned you are conscious of them and you prevent them. Once again, this is Cyber Culture Interface. If you have learned one or, two, one or two things from this video, please like this video and share with your friend. And especially in order to protect your friends and your loved ones, please share this video, let it go around to people, let people know the ways they are exposing themselves and the way they can easily be compromised. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel.